Welcome, everybody, to week 13 of Inside the IFL. I'm your host, Todd Tryon. Welcome inside my home. I just came off a bye week from doing this show, uh, the one time this year that uh, I will not put anything out. But we've got a great week in store for you guys coming up this weekend. Uh, we want to talk about week 12. Uh, I've got a great interview. Uh, we got some plays of the week. And uh, we're also going to talk a little playoffs. All right, so I thank you guys for taking time out of your day, and let's get right into it. Is once again, I mean, I say this every week. It was a crazy week. Uh, just about every game came down to the last possession. Uh, we had some unbelievable games, and things started off Friday night. We had Quad Cities with this is a big game fighting for seating going to Green Bay, and uh, Green Bay is hot, needless to say. And uh, this game was no different uh, as Max Mailer. Uh, 236 yards, three passing, uh, three touchdowns passing. He also had a couple on the ground. He continues to have an outstanding season as Green Bay uh, took care of business quite easily, 64 to 36. Saturday, we had a full slate of games for you. And uh, things started off, Arizona traveling to Jacksonville, revival of an old, old league uh, rivalry there. Uh, Jacksonville still looking to, they've been making a lot of adjustments there in their roster. I think they found a, a, a few key positions, one of them being the quarterback, uh, but Dalton Sneed and the Arizona Rattlers were too much for them. Very competitive first half. They pulled away the second half. Dalton Sneed, 13 of 19, 213 yards, seven touchdowns, another 24 yards on the ground as uh, Arizona had a dominant win uh, there in Jacksonville as they continue to get hot potentially at the right time. Uh, another game there on Saturday night, we saw Iowa traveling to Sioux Falls, and this was a shootout. I mean, it was a shootout to start <clears throat> to start things off. Second half tightened up a little bit, but uh, Iowa scored late, winning that game 47-45 as they saw Daniel Smith, former Storm quarterback, went to Tulsa, came up this year, beat him with Tulsa, and, and threw a couple trades, ended up in Iowa, and he went 18 for 26, 179 yards, five touchdowns, had another one rushing. So Iowa Barnstormers gets out of there with the win. Uh, an exciting game fighting for one of the top seeds in the Eastern Conference saw Massachusetts going to Frisco. And uh, this game had T.J. Edwards, the reigning league MVP coming back off of uh, uh, an elbow injury over the last three games. And I mean, he, he looked pretty good and uh, they control the Fresco control that game in the second half uh, winning at 52, 48 TJ Edwards, 10 of 16, 114 yards, three passing touchdowns at another 68 rushing. What he really brings to the table for another two touchdowns as uh, Fresco gets that win against Massachusetts. We saw an out, another out-of-conference game, San Diego traveling to Tulsa. And, and uh, one thing we know in Tulsa, Jones is going to have his, his team ready to play. This was no different. Uh, he held a high-scoring uh, San Diego Nate Davis team to 42 points, but it wasn't quite enough. Uh, San Diego beats Tulsa 42-34. Nate Davis doing what he does, 20-34, 196 yards. Uh, and five touchdowns for another exciting game. And then the last two, West Coast games, we saw uh, Northern Arizona going to Vegas. And this was a great in-conference game. We knew this was going to be a great game, and it did not disappoint. Joshua Jones, who's been hot there for Northern Arizona, was 14 of 26 for 200. Five yards, two touchdowns. He had another 40 on the ground for three touchdowns as a Naz was able to get out of there with a couple late scores, 58 to 52, tightening up uh, that Western Conference. And then our last game, we saw Duke City 0 uh, 8 traveling to Tucson. And uh, Tucson, 20 to nothing at half. Duke City was shut out in the first half. How do you respond from something like that? Well, you shut the other team out the second half, and that's exactly what happened. Duke City gets out of there with their first win of the season, 21-20. to 20. Uh, It was for, for a really low-scoring game. It was a pretty exciting game, uh, but that uh, got Duke City their first game as they set up for a showdown in San Antonio this weekend that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. So that is Week 12. Uh, don't listen to me. Check out the plays of the week uh, as, as we trend towards Week 13. Myler handoff Burgess sidesteps up the middle Burgess still on his feet into the end zone 
And it will be returnable from the back of the end zone. It comes. That one on a busted tackle. There's only the kicker to beat him, and this one's going to go all the way to the house. Opening series. A surprise here out of the gates as Reyna takes a low snap, throws left side that's bobbled, and then intercepted. It's ripped away right out of C.J. Windham's hands. Tap Lynch next to Mitchell. He's going to take the toss. Cut back. Nice. Fights his way, drags two men in for the Sugar Skulls. Touchdown. Things off here in the second half with the first drive. Edwards tucks and keeps. There we He's go. got space. And all the time in the world, T.J. Edwards! From left to right go the Nighthawks, two wide and forward, motion to the left side, shotgun snap. Reina steps back, high wobbling spiral, left side, it's caught by Holly! Hey, this is out there and a few others will introduce you to in a moment. Dejon Emery's been a pleasant surprise so far. This one to the back of the end zone, first play, caught, touchdown. in motion comes across the formation takes the handoff bounces to the outside splits back and fights his way in touchdown sugar skulls he stays on his feet they don't have to get it all here just a chunk that's what been a toss end zone caught out of auburn he's in the middle of number 95 this one thrown to the back of the end zone and caught into the first row of stands held on to that ball is a touchdown off to BC and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Quad City Steam Wheelers. It's one yard for the first down. It'll be Lorenzo, the quarterback, to keep it. He's got room and more into the end zone, leaping over a defender. Five touchdowns, shotgun snap, blitz comes, Reyna off his back foot, throws to an open Randolph, left side end zone, touchdown. Massachusetts sitting at six and three, five at seven and two, fumble. Ball still rolling. Pirates miss it. Picked oh, up by it. Frisco. Patience pays off Charles Williams. He'll go. Under pressure, rolls back, only two rushers, and it's picked off. Intercepted by the Sugar Skulls. Time for anything but one heave for the end zone. Smith with pressure fires off his back foot. This one to Laranji based on McCoy, and it's intercepted. Laranji picks it up. He's got room to work with, gets up to the 25-yard line, one man behind him, and he gets tackled down at the 11. Snap to Irwin, four-man rush. Looks downfield, picked off! Ravarius Rivers, he's still on his feet up the left sideline. Still going by Rivers, spinning. But each have been shut out tonight. Shotgun snap, Jones steps back, off his back foot, down the near sideline, caught! Maldonado breaks a tackle at the five and is in for a touchdown. Low snap, Kilgo handles it. Now he's going to step up. He's going to throw to a wide open man. Touchdown. Holding on to it is Sloan. At the top of the screen. Myler throws pass. Caught Demetrius Moore on the run. Demetrius Moore still on his feet. Looking for the end zone. He is in. Touchdown. With Sap Lynch. Fakes the toss. Mike Jones intercepted. Intercepted by Duke City, and that's ball game. Intercepted by Wilkerson. Going the other way, Julius Wilkerson, he's dropped. Take over the lead as the toss to Robinson. He goes way outside.
All right, guys, welcome back. As you saw, an outstanding week 12. Now we just keep moving forward. Week 13, as we continue to march towards August 17th, the IFL National Championship game there in Vegas. I got an outstanding uh, coach online here. Uh, there's nobody better to talk about the march to the championship game than Coach uh, Les Moss. Coach, you've had an opportunity to uh, play in a lot of championship games, win a lot of championship games. Uh, for the viewers out there who don't know who Coach Les Moss is, tell them your story. Well, I don't think we have that long. <laughs> No, I started up, I, I come from, from a football family. My father coached uh, professionally and collegiately for over 50 years. So I just kind of got into it naturally. And uh, I started my career in Chicago with the Chicago Bruisers in 88. My father gave me my first job. That was in the Arena Football League and uh, went on to have a good career in the AFL. Um, went to about, went to 13 Arena Bowls. Um, during a 30 year career there, um, a lot of, uh, final four games, uh, just about every team that, that we were with, or I was with, where it was in competing for championship games. It's been a great, it's been a great run. It really has. And I mean, nothing has changed since you've come over to the IFL. I mean, 13 arena bowls. I did not, I knew you've been a lot of them. I didn't realize it was, it was quite that many of them. The IFL, the 22 IFL championship was my 14th. Now, I haven't won that many. Sure. <laughs> but, uh, and, you know, it's a lot of those were as an assistant. I mean, I had to learn. I didn't just become a head coach. You know, I had to learn. But I was taught and I had some really, really good teachers and and just been blessed to have a lot of te great teammates around. me. Sure. Absolutely. Well, listen, so fourth year as an IFL coach, uh, how has this year's competition stacked up against the previous three years? Well, that first year, you know, we were coming out of the pandemic. That was 21, and we were coming out of the pandemic. And I didn't really know that much about the league because it was really my first experience in the league. Uh, I'd gotten that job three weeks before the season started in Iowa, <laughs> and we had to put a staff together, get a team together, and and play a different style of football. And, um, you know, comparing that year to this year, it's night and day. The league's bigger. Um, it's very competitive every week. You can just see the scores, uh, the, the competition there, all these games are going down the wire. This is big league football. Now it really is. Like I tell you, it's, it's fun to sit back and watch. I mean, the, the, you know, you got to compliment obviously the owners and you got a great one there and, and Fred and Robin, but uh, they've oh, yeah. done a great job of, of bringing the best coaches in here. And you guys have done an outstanding job of, of recruiting players. And it kind of leads me into my, my third question. You flipped this roster over from last year, right? Last year you made a deep run, uh, came up just a little bit short in that conference championship game. But I want to say like 17 rookies you brought in here. Um, what are some contributing factors on how you can take that many rookies and flip yourself into uh, competing for a, a tough playoff spot? Well, that's a testament to our assistant coaches who, you know, I mean, really work hard in the months of October, November, and December recruiting. You know, uh, Coach Windsor, who I, uh, is the best offensive coordinator in the league and a great recruiter, does a great job. Coach Moran is a defensive coordinator, another great recruiter. And Coach Mosley came on this year, and he's he did a great job as well. You know, we work hard in the off season, so we can hopefully get the right guys. And uh, these guys have done a great job of coming in here, learning, uh, buying into the, the process of becoming a good football team, which is not an easy process. There's a lot to that, a lot of adversity in that. And uh, they really have no idea how good they are. And, uh, and that's a good thing because they continue to get better and better and better. And that is the one thing you can expect out of a Coach Moss team is you know how to get these guys uh, playing better throughout the season so you peak at the right time because, as you and I both know, it's it's uh, you want to be peak late in the, peaking late in the season as opposed to early in the season. Yeah, it's June and July in the IFL. You're winning your games in June and July, then uh, good things are going to happen for sure. So you're on a much-deserved bye week, all right? How does Coach Moss spend his bye week? The only thing different about a bye week is we don't have an opponent. We we still work. We, we're taking a look at ourselves. We're taking a look at, you know, our next opponent as well as upcoming, upcoming opponents. It gives us an opportunity to look a little forward. We don't have to have total focus on, on the next one. But, but you know, right now I, I'm zeroing in on the Rattlers. 
And that is a big game next weekend. You guys can make the short trip down uh, to Glendale. Uh, and that's always entertaining when you pull up into uh, to the Rattler, uh, to, to the Rattlers, because uh, you, 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 you've got them a few times here recently. Well, they, they've gotten us too. You know, they're a good team and, and, and they're getting healthy right now. And it's going to be a barn burner, just like the last four or five have been. So last question for you, and I know you're uh, there, there in Florida getting some house chores done there. I'll let you get back to that. But you've made some late runs in the, in the past couple of years, one of those ending in that championship in 2022. How does this year's team compare to the previous couple? You know, this, this season is uh, very similar as far as uh, the 22 season. I mean, we, we, we do have a young group. We had a young group last year. Um, you know, the uh, – the roles are starting to uh, get defined within our roster and everybody's, uh, you know, working hard. Uh, this team is very similar. They're close. They, there are a lot of similarities to this team and the 2022 team. Now we got a lot of work to do. I mean, we have six more regular season games and then hopefully we, we we're able to qualify for the playoffs, but I like where we're sitting right now with this group. And coach, you should. Uh, it's been fun watching you guys get better each week. The one thing I always know about a coach, coach Moss team is they're going to be prepared. And uh, I, I really appreciate your time. And you enjoy the, the rest of your bye week. Okay. It's great talking to you, Commissioner. There you guys have it. Coach Moss uh, having an outstanding season and say he has taken 17 rookies, flipped them into a contender, and looking forward to see what uh, Coach Moss and the rest of, of the Wrangler team does uh, for the 2024 season. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you. There you guys have it. A great uh, interview with Coach Moss. He does things the right way. He's going to have his team contending. Looking forward to, uh, to seeing that. So just a couple little details here uh, before we focus on week 13. Next Wednesday, be on the lookout. We've got all IFL National Championship information coming out uh, to you guys, as well as tickets going on sale. Our big game is August 17th, 1 p.m. there in Henderson, Nevada. It's going to be exciting. Uh, and so as we talk about the quest towards that championship game, let's take a look uh, at, the, at the standings. The current standings, as you guys know, four teams from each division make the playoffs with the top two seeds hosting. Uh, it starts July 27th as the first round. Second round is, is August 3rd, that championship game being August 17th. And I'm going to go ahead and keep this up here as we talk about our loaded week 13. So you can see uh, what matchup means something. And the first one starts in the Eastern Conference, noon on Saturday. Green Bay goes to Massachusetts, and this is a pivotal game for both of them. As Green Bay's fighting for that one seed, uh, Massachusetts is fighting to, uh, to, to get back into that conversation. Should be a great one. Tulsa goes to Jacksonville. Jacksonville's lone win this year was against Tulsa. As you can see here, Tulsa is still in a fight for the four seed. Uh, that, that four seed, even the three seed, is, is still wide open. Six games to go. Should be a great one. Duke City going to San Antonio. All right, these are two teams that generally, uh, they shoot out. Uh, and, and I look for, you know, we sit here and talk about the gunslingers. I think this could be an old-fashioned uh, showdown. And Duke City going to San Antonio. San Antonio needs this to stay in that race. Uh, and Duke City's not been mathematically... Uh, eliminated yet. Vegas going to Sioux Falls. Vegas, as you can see, is still fighting for seeding. Uh, Sioux Falls, they are fighting to get back into the playoff picture. Should be a great one. Seven o'clock central time. Uh, Fresco going to Quad Cities. All right. Fresco cl uh, clinging on to the one seed. Quad City clinging on to the four seed. Should be a great game. Seven o'clock Saturday night. Tucson at Bay Area. Bay Area holds the one seed. They hold the overall one seed. Billy Back's team has already knocked off the previous one seed being Vegas. Can they do it again in Bay Area? Uh, that is 8 o'clock on uh, Saturday night Central Time. And then our final game for you for the weekend should be an unbelievable game. We see Arizona. As you can see right now, they're in that five spot uh, as San Diego holds the tiebreaker, uh, travels to San Diego, for uh, San Diego's first Saturday night game of the season. And this one should be an outstanding one, 8.05 Central Time for you guys, West Coast time. Two teams on a bye, that's Iowa and uh, Northern Arizona. But looking, looking forward to an exciting week 13. 
all our games, as you guys know, is, is free to you. It's live on YouTube, live on uh, Caffeine, and there's other platforms that you can sit here and watch it on. Uh, but on behalf of the entire Indoor Football League, I thank you guys for your time, checking out our show, seeing what's going on in, inside of the IFL, and looking forward to an outstanding weekend uh, as, as we wrap up Week 13. Guys, thanks a lot. Have a great week.